We have here a circuit that we're going to analyze using Kirchhoff's laws. You'll notice that in this circuit, there's actually also a dependent current source. This current source is a source that's injecting current into this node. It has a value of five times I delta. So it's dependent. The current that this source is producing is dependent upon I delta, which is a quantity that's defined someplace else in the circuit. In this case, I delta is defined as the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor from left to right. Our desire is to, our task is to determine the voltage across this 20 ohm resistor. And to do so, we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. You'll notice we've got a 500 volt source here, V out there. I've gone ahead and identified this current here as I naught also. So when you look at a circuit like this and not just sure where to start, start by writing equations. We've got tools in our toolbox. We have Kirchhoff's laws, we have Ohm's law in our toolbox. What can we do with those? Well, let's start by writing a node equation right there using Kirchhoff's current law that says the current entering the node or the currents leaving the node must equal zero. So I delta is defined going into the node. We're going to write that as minus I delta. I naught is defined leaving the node. So it'll be plus I naught. And then we have this current coming in here, which is five times I delta. It's entering the node, so we're going to write it as a minus five I delta. And the sum of those three terms must equal zero. Well, we've got minus I delta, minus 5 I delta, that's minus 6 I delta, which if we take it to the other side, we then have an expression for I naught. I naught is equal to 6 times I delta. Now, we've already pointed out that we only can get, we get only, how do I say it? If you've got two nodes, you'll get only one independent node equation from it. In other words, the equation that we would get from this node is basically the same equation that we would get from this node, only with a minus sign difference. And in general, it's true that if you've got n nodes, you're only going to be able to get n minus 1 independent node equations from them. That nth equation will always be the linear combination or can be obtained by a linear combination of the other equations. So we've got one equation with two unknowns, I naught and I delta. Where can we get another equation? What other tools do we have? Well, we've got Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that the sum of the voltage drops around any closed loop must equal zero. Now, we need to be careful in choosing the loops. I mean, it's true around any loop, but any loop in this circuit involving this current source introduces a challenge because we don't have an expression or a way to write an expression for the voltage across this ideal current source. It's an independent ideal current source. But under all circumstances, the current that this source produces is five times I delta. The voltage across here is not a function of the current here. The voltage across this source is established and controlled by the rest of the circuit. So to write an expression, an equation going around a loop that contains this would require us to introduce a new variable. That's not the end of the world. If we don't have any other options, we may do exactly that. But we've got another option to begin with. We've got a loop around this left loop that we can sum the equation or sum the voltage drops for it. So this was KCL at the top. Top note. Let's do a KVL, a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation around the left loop. This is top node. All right, he's starting here and going clockwise. Minus the plus, that's a voltage increase. A voltage increase then has a negative as we're writing this equation. Negative 500. Now, coming across here, we're going in the direction that I delta is referenced. So current referenced in a voltage drop, we assume a voltage drop here which gives us then adding the voltage drop across this 5 ohm resistor, which from Ohm's law we know to be the current times the resistance, or 5 times I delta. It's a plus because we're going in the direction of current flow. The voltage drop there will be plus 5I delta. Now coming on down here, we have plus to minus V out, which we could write it in terms of V out, but we know that V out or V naught 
is equal to the current here, I naught, times the 20 ohms. This equation up here, we've already got the variable I naught, so rather than introducing the V naught, we just are going to go ahead and write the V naught is equal to 20 times I naught. Coming back here to the equation then, plus to minus, that'll be a plus 20 I naught. The sum of those three terms must equal zero. Now, we've got one equation here, we've got another equation here, both of them in terms of the unknowns I naught and I delta, therefore we can solve this. For either I naught or I delta, it doesn't matter which one, once we know one we'll be able to get the other. So let's take this equation right here, let's rewrite it, bringing the 500 to the minus 500 over to the other side as a positive 500, and we have 5I delta plus 20 times I naught. But rather than writing I naught, let's go ahead and substitute I naught with 6I delta. We have then plus 20 times I naught, which is 6I delta. And the sum of those then equal a positive 500. So we have 5I delta, 20 times 6 is 120I delta plus 5I delta, that's 120 125i delta equals 500, or i delta equals 125, 500 divided by 125 is 4 amps. Okay, that's not what we were asked to find. We were asked to find the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor, but knowing i delta is going to help us. Because we know that V out is equal to 20 times i naught, and we know that I naught is 6 times I delta, so we can get then that I naught, just substituting in there, up here, I naught is equal to 6 times I delta, which is equal to 6 times 4 equals 24 amps. And we know that V out is equal to 20 times I naught, so finally we get V naught is equal to 20 times I naught, which is equal to 20 times 24 which is equal to 2 times 24 is 48 with a 0 and is 480 volts. That's what we were asked to find. But at any time you're doing calculations in an engineering environment, you want to go back and just make sure that it makes sense. Let's go back now and look at this loop that we went around and see if in fact this voltage of 480 volts makes sense. Well, starting here, we're going up 500 volts. So that voltage right there is 500 volts above this voltage here. Now we've got a voltage drop across this resistor of 5 times I delta. Well, we found I delta to be 4 amps. So here we're going to be at, well, if we're at 500 volts here, here we're going to be at 500 minus 5 I delta, I delta was 4, 5 times 4 is 20, so we're at 480 volts after we drop the 5 volts there. And sure enough, then, we drop the V naught of 480, gets us back to the zero. So that's that solution, we've now verified it is consistent with and satisfies what we knew had to be true, and that was going around the circle. You can go back and plug in now the values of I naught and V naught and show that this original KCL equation also satisfy, is satisfied with that solution.